Welcome back to the triad room, Jehovah Rapha, where sin is a sickness and Christ is the cure. Now, this is the first video I'm making in uh, 2021. So uh, I'd like to wish you again a happy new year and may God bless you throughout this new season. Um, for this video, I'd like to ask a, a, a pressing question that many people, no doubt, are asking. And it's this. If God is all powerful, and if he truly loves us, his people, then why doesn't he eradicate the COVID-19 virus that has caused so much misery, suffering, and death as I speak? Why doesn't he, with the wave of his mighty hand or a spoken command, get rid of this virus? Why doesn't he? Now, for me, personally, it's not a question of, of can God do it? Because I believe he can do it. The question for me is, why hasn't he done it yet? Why hasn't he done it yet? Now, to answer this uh, prevailing question may mean we get into the realms of what is God's perfect will for us or what is God's permissive will for our lives. Now, God's perfect will refers to his perfect plan for our lives if we are obedient to him. On the other hand, his permissive will refers to the fact that if we are disobedient and repent, um, sometimes God has to take us through the scenic route or reroute us back to his perfect will. But that scenic route can be sometimes painful. Um, it could mean we get some scars. It could mean we end up in prison. Um, you know, we go through a difficult time, a time of breakdown, you know, um, wasting precious time. And a good example of that is the children of Israel when they were released from the tyrant Pharaoh. Um, when Moses went down to Pharaoh and said, let my people go and they were released to go to the, the promised land of Canaan. It is said that the journey should have taken uh, 11 days from Egypt to the land of Canaan, some uh, 5,800 miles or so. But because of their disobedience, they wandered in the wilderness or the desert for 40 years um, before they got to the promised land. So although they got to the promised land, you know, it wasn't God's perfect plan or will for their lives. It was his permissive will that was done. Um, and so, as I said, to answer that question, we have to wonder what's happening now. Is it God's perfect will for our lives or is it his permissive will being played out? Now, let's look at a portion of scripture which I've found, which I think is relevant to this particular topic. Hebrews 12, verse 24. And I'll read a portion of it. You can see it coming up on the screen as I speak. Um, and I'll quickly read it. And it says this, And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better, th better things than that of Abel, see that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refuse him that speak on earth, much more shall we uh, escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. And this is the key verse for me, verse 26 whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, or not the earth only, but also heaven. And the last verse says, And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. It may sound a bit gobbledygook, but I'll explain that um, further into this video. You see, many things we are experiencing right now could be a result of our actions. When I say our, I mean mankind's actions. And what we see is a reaction or a reverberation of our initial sinful action from heaven. Um, so we act... We, be, we are sinful and then God in a sense reacts and sends judgment. 
I believe God is clearly speaking through this pandemic. I've said it in previous videos and I say it again. I believe God is clearly speaking through this pandemic, through this time. But are we listening? Are we hearing what God is actually saying to us? And if we're not listening, then why are we surprised or shocked that there is a shaking, according to Hebrews 12? So why don't this powerful God, this loving God, eradicate this horrible virus that's plaguing us all? Could it be because we are not listening? We are not being obedient to his plan or will for our lives. We are, in a sense, being disobedient. And what we are seeing is his permissive will being played out, as I've say, said again, around us. And when there is a, a shaking, the wonderful thing about shaking is shaking brings about separation. If you've ever seen someone uh, sieving wheat or flour in a sieve, if the flour or whatever it is is lumpy and you sieve, the finer particles fall through the sieve and the lumps remain in the sieve and then you throw those lumps away. And I believe that God is actually, with the pandemic, is shaking. And the shaking is separating the chaff, you know, from the wheat. The shaking is separating uh, the weak from the strong. The shaking is separating those who are having church from those who are playing church. The shaking is separating true worshippers from the charlatans. The shaking is separating those who are truly ministering God's word from those who are practicing witchcraft. Shaking. The shaking. All of us are experiencing a shaking. Both church and state, government, kings, queens, all are experiencing this shaking. This, this, this shaking is not um, racist or, you know, it's not partial. You know, all of us are being judged. All of us are being shaken at this present time by God himself. And the question is, who will stand? Or who will remain standing? If we recognize what's happening in the supernatural, um, perhaps we wouldn't be so anxious when we see what's happening or manifested in the, in the natural. Hebrews clearly states, you know, that there, if we don't listen to the one who he has sent, Jesus Christ, then Heaven itself, God himself, will speak, will speak. I believe that through this uh, time, this season, uh, this, this pandemic, that God is reestablishing himself as front, uh, as center. You know, um, far too long we have pushed God to the sidelines. And I said, I'll say this again. Um, there were times when uh, of, of national crisis that governments would call for a national assembly. They would ask the nation to pray. But during this time of COVID-19 around the world, you'd be hard pushed to find a government asking its people to form a national assembly. Yes, there are churches that are calling for fasting and prayer, but when was the last time you heard a government, a prime minister, a president say, nation, let us go into a season or a time of prayer and fasting? Governments around the world have clearly demonstrated that they have neglected uh, the almighty God. And in doing so, God, in a sense, is shaking them to their very core. When we get through this pandemic, that there will be a, a, in a sense, a recalibration of where people's uh, focus uh, should be. Um, that not only the church and the state will see God or put God in his rightful place. You know, I think it would be 
people who don't even believe in God, I believe, will come to a place of questioning their, their lack of belief and begin to search out that there is something higher. There's a power beyond uh, what the, the scientists say does not exist. They realize that there is a God. Now, as I close, let's look at Hebrews uh, 12, verse 27, the last verse once more. And it says this, And this word yet once more signified or signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Now, the word made in that verse of scripture simply means established established that verse of scripture is saying if something has been established when there is a shaking it will not be moved it's like a mountain when there's an earthquake the mountain may move from side to side but it still stands okay but if something is not established it hasn't got roots then when there's a shaking it is removed the bible says this in matthew 24 verse uh, 35 heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away in other words god's word if it is in you will make you will establish you in other words so when you see all this misery and suffering and death happening around you you won't be moved because you have the word of god established in you it stabilizes you it gives you roots when you get into the midst of a storm, you won't worry or fret or be anxious because the word of God keeps you. It keeps you. So I would urge anyone who doesn't know Christ as Savior, who doesn't know the word of God, to get to know God as Savior. Because he is shaking everything right now. Everything around us is shaking. The economy is shaking. Lives are shaking. Marriages are shaking. Finances are shaking. Everything is shaking. Amen. So... If you don't have Christ established in you, you too will be shaken. You lose your mind. Okay? You have high blood pressure, high anxiety. And I'm urging you, get to know Christ as Savior. And what is happening in the supernatural, what is happening in the natural won't phase you because God's word has been established in you. May God bless you. May God keep you. And please, please, please share this message with as many people as you can. To let them know that God loves them. God bless you. Until next time. Dear viewer, if you've been challenged by this message and would like to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, please pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Come into my heart and forgive me of all my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations, you've been born again. My advice to you would be to find a Bible-believing fellowship to continue your walk with God. May God bless you, may God keep you. Until next time.